I want to begin the conversation um, with um, a member of parliament, Anna Sovson, and please forgive me if I am mispronouncing your name, um, but thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, that would be Ina Sovson. You did uh, quite well. Hi. I, uh, good morning to you, and um, we just want to extend to you and the people of Ukraine our heartfelt solidarity, I think is the right word. Um, tell us what's happening there. So I'm in Kiev, uh, uh, the capital. It is uh, much better here compared to uh, other uh, parts of the country. Uh, so uh, in Kiev, uh, we are second week of war. I can't believe I'm saying this sentence, actually. Uh, we do hear uh, air raid a lot from uh, time to time, but it seems like air defense system have been uh, working well around Kiev so far. Uh, so uh, we do not have major uh, targets hit by the Russian missiles, which they are sighting from uh, neighboring Belarus, just north um, uh, from Kiev. Uh, the, the city is under curfew, so you can only go outside for a couple hours uh, a day. And that is not extremely safe because there are groups of infiltrators who are just walking around the city and they can start shooting randomly at uh, cars, at people. We had this uh, terrific a terrible incident uh, when uh, this infiltrators group, they just opened a fire on uh, the car that was driving by. And uh, there was a family uh, with three children there. And one of the girls, she was seven, she was killed on spot. And two other kids are uh, still struggling for their life in uh, in uh, the hospital. Uh, so uh, that is the situation in Kiev. But again, it is uh, relatively safe compared to other cities in Ukraine. So you are seeing now uh, several other cities uh, uh, well, uh, my, my heart pains particularly because of the city of Kharkiv, which is the second biggest city in Ukraine, on the east of Ukraine. You can see it over there. It has been so heavily bombarded by the Russians from air. It's just unbelievable. Uh, I'm seeing those explosions, and I just can't believe that this is happening in my native city. I did see bombs exploding like five minutes walk from my school. Uh, I'm getting messages from my former classmates, my former teachers over there in Kharkiv, and they all are saying one and the same. This is an act of genocide, what, people, what Putin is doing to us in Kharkiv, and please let the whole world know what he is doing to us. Uh, they are bombarding the city from air. The air defense in Kharkiv is not as strong as in Kiev, and uh, and it's just terrible over there, as well as in, in several other cities uh, all over Ukraine. Now, Ina, uh, and Ben, let me let me jump in for a minute. Ina, again, I'm, I'm certainly I'm coming to you from the state of Maryland, and it is no doubt that uh, certainly throughout America and all over the world, Absolutely. our hearts of uh, solidarity are with you. And so, you know, one of the things I, I want to ask is the reporting. You know, you said it's important that we re we continuously report on the genocide of what Putin is doing. I know that there's efforts uh, by Putin and Russia to take out all communications and report only that things are so well and, and they're working in such a humanitarian way. What is the reporting like of his efforts? Although I know you all see it, are your telecommunication systems still up that, that, that the people of Ukraine can see uh, what advancements and what genocidal efforts Putin is making right now? Uh, that isn't it true. We do realize that uh, his war is not just uh, by weapons, but also by information. And actually, he did manage to get into this war because of the propaganda machine that he set initially in Russia. But then he was also using that uh, with like Russia Today television channels all over the world. And it's, it pains me to realize that uh, like none of the Western countries did manage to block that up until very recently. I believe had the Russia Today channels and other uh, channels on YouTube at least would have been blocked it. The situation would have been different. But the situation in Ukraine in terms of access to information is very good right now. Apart from several areas uh, where the connection was put down mainly by the Ukrainian forces. So uh, other than that, uh, the, the connection is well. We do have the internet. There is a vibrant social network sphere. Uh, mainly Facebook and Telegram are being used to get information. I think the first week of war, everyone just learned uh, the sources, uh, that double check the sources of information. Uh, also, all the television channels, and that is extremely not typical for Ukraine, they all joined forces. So uh, when you turn on the TV, uh, like regardless of which channel you are on, they will be showing one and the same things with, with TV hosts from completely different channels. Some of them were like, like uh, such uh, enemies before uh, in a political scene, but right now they're all reporting the 
same, uh, just to make sure that everyone has access to the same information. The Russians did try to hit the TV tower in Kyiv, but they failed. Again, air defense system in, in Kyiv is working, uh, unlike other cities. Uh, so uh, they, they failed to, to, you know, to destroy the, uh, the tower, but they did kill uh, five. It would appear to be a family of five with that missile attack. Uh, we still don't know because their, their borders were just burned to such a big extent. We still don't know the names of the people who were killed in that blast. But the TV tower is standing, the TV is, is on, and uh, the, uh, the social media and the internet is on. So that's, that's okay. And that does help us, not just in terms of getting the information, but also coordinating the resistance efforts. That is extremely, uh, extremely uh, important right now. Because what Putin failed to realize is that Ukraine is a democracy. I, uh, I'm representing an opposition party. I have so many uh, like criticism of, of our government, and we shall proceed to that after the victory. But, as, but I still recognize Ukraine to be a democracy in a sense that people do have a say, and people do have a voice, and uh, people are acting on their own, not just when the government is telling them to do. So now we are seeing those huge uh, efforts on the side of the civil society in Ukraine to help fight this this um, crazy in, invasion and people are doing that not because someone at top told them to do like that is happening in, in Russia but actually just because they want to and that is why this resistance is so difficult to fight against because there is no one on top that you can just take down and then everything will will, will cripple because the, the system of resistance is so decentralized it does rely a lot on, on the internet so that is crucial uh, for us to support as of now uh, but uh, yeah in terms terms of infrastructure it is all well for the time being so so you know let me let me also ask this question is you know you're saying that you're a member of the opposition party uh but but how important and i want to ask two-part question how important do you think it is for for you all as members of parliament of the ukrainian democratic government to number one show solidarity and stay together in this time of crisis number one and then number two I know that the U.S. has has provided sanctions. I know some of the things that NATO has done. But at this at this point, can you just tell the world what is it that you all, as the Ukrainian people, need? It? And obviously, the United States and NATO have spoken about not being able to put boots on the ground. But tell us, tell the world what it is that you need right now to ensure the victory of the Ukrainian people against this this mobster known as as Putin. Yeah, thank you so much for the question. Uh, so in terms of the political situation, uh, it is true. We all stay united right now. And if someone told me like 10 days ago that I would uh, be saying this phrase, I wouldn't believe. Like, trust me, the competition, the political competition here is fierce. Uh, we do disagree with the government on so many positions, but that really doesn't matter right now. In order to continue our disagreements, we need a country. And that is our primary goal, is just to save our country. Actually, the only political political party uh, whose MPs are not staying united are the MPs from the pro-Russian group, and they all have actually fled the country, days leading to the war or the first days of war. And uh, as hypocritical as that is, they have all left for Western uh, countries. So the uh, pretense of love of Russia uh, was just that, just a pretense, a love of the money from Putin, not actual uh, you know, recognition of, of whatever values Putin claims to represent. So uh, in terms of your second question, what we are asking for from the West, you are showing those pictures right now, like this explosion in Kharkiv. This, I think, is in, uh, I'm not sure where, this one is in Borodyanka, which is in, in uh, Kyiv region. Uh, there was a missile uh, attack uh, yesterday yesterday in Chernihiv, which is like uh, when 100 kilometers north from uh, from Kiev, uh, they destroyed a whole residential building, nine floors. The recent data is 49 people killed in one single blast. They they destroyed a residential building in uh, Zhitomir, which is uh, a bit to the west from Kiev, 100 kilometers to the west. Uh, and we are still calculating the casualties. That is how, th that is the city of, uh, I believe that was the, the town of Irpin, uh, which is 40 kilometers north of Kiev, and that is being completely bombarded, particularly from air. So the number one thing, and probably the, the you know, a matter of survival for us, is to ensure a no-fly zone over Ukraine. 
We are not asking for boots on the ground. We realize that, you know, that's not an option. But uh, no fly zone is something we need so badly. Just look at that. That was like uh, that video we just saw is from Kharkiv, my native city. They are bombarding Kharkiv so much. It's unbelievable. And we just cannot protect our citizens there. So no fly zone is, is the biggest thing we are asking for. It's crucial for our survival, for the survival of our kids. We are ready to fight on the ground. I believe Ukrainian army... We had this, you know, this meme around the social media saying that, well, if uh, this is Ukrainian army auditioning for NATO, we think we are doing a pretty good job in kicking mm-hmm. asses Russians who who are trying to invade our country with a much bigger army, but they can't proceed on the ground. The only power they have is in air. That is uh, the only uh, like uh, the, the only way where they can prevail. So we are asking for a no-fly zone. We are asking for fighter jets in order to be able to to destroy those bastards, because what they are doing it just it pains me to see that I. Like, there is a story that just is breaking my heart. In Kharkiv, uh, three days ago, twins were born in a bunker uh, in the underground. And uh, the next day, both the mother and uh, the father of those twins were killed in another bombardment. Mm. This is just a story of, uh, of so many other people. They have killed over 20 people, uh, over 20 children in Ukraine, over mm. 2,000 people. And those are mostly uh, from air. That is why we're asking for no-fly zone. And, and we believe we have the right to ask for that. Because Ukraine did uh, um, give up our nuclear weapon in 1994, which we had mm. from the Soviet mm. times, in mm. exchange for guarantees from the West of our security. Yes. We yes. do have guarantees that is on writing. That was the promise that we were given by the Americans, by the Brits. And now that is not being kept because they say that that will involve uh, uh, you in direct conflict with Russia. Well, here is what I think about that, is that uh, let's imagine the worst case scenario. Let's imagine Russians do destroy Ukraine and get uh, to, you know, take control of the whole of Ukraine. Then it will mean they will get to the Polish border. And they have already said that they don't want Poland in NATO, so they will invade Poland. They have already said that they don't, don't like the level of neutrality of uh, Finland, so they can attack Finland any time. I was actually speaking to Finnish MPs just today, and they realized the danger. So then the West will have to intervene. But So we are just asking to get uh, in uh, on that earlier rather than later to be able to save thousands of, of civilians' lives from that fascist that Putin is. And, and so, Aina, g- g- given that you know that, that there was a deal struck where Ukraine at one time had the third largest arsenal of, of nuclear weapons and they gave them up for, for these guaranteed perfect, uh, protections, why is it, and, and you can speak very plainly to this, why is it that you think the West, you know, I get uh, the conflict with, with, with uh, Putin, but are there capitalistic reasons that you believe the West is not honoring that agreement of protecting Ukraine haven't that you all haven't given up your nuclear arsenal uh, I think there is an air raid alert I, I think I heard something exploding uh, oh, um, so sorry. sorry I just have to double check what is happening yes, please to keep, make sure you're safe correct yeah uh, well I think it is uh, further there. Oh my gosh, I really hate this. Uh, so um, you have to go. Please go. Do what you have to do. Yes. Please do. Go do what you have to do. Okay, just I, I will be very quick. But see what is happening here. That is what what we are living in right now, and just pretending that uh, this is not happening is is not going to help anyone. I believe the West will have to get involved. If you want to, you know, there was this phrase after the Second World War: "Never again should we allow for this to happen." But this is happening. And and people who were saying never again on the, you know, victory V Day, they are just lying if they continue to say never again. Because this is happening. This is a minor Eastern European country being uh, allowed to be taken over by a dictator, killing people just because he wants to, and pretending that it is not happening. We remember how that ended up in the Second World War uh, with, uh, you know, it doesn't help pretending it's not going to touch upon you. It will touch your lives. So so now I'm just asking the West to step in and to, you know, live up to the expectations and to the those values that the West is promoting and that we as Ukrainians are fighting for so hard. Great. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think I should really be going down the basement. I'm sorry. 
Please be safe. Do what you have to do. Thank you for your time. We're yeah, sending prayers you. to Ukraine. Please do spread the word about the no-fly zone. It's really, really, really important right now. Thank you. Done. Please be safe.